Alright, so when we left off, we were going over arrays and how you can uh, declare an array and then how you can assign a length of that array and then how you can assign values to certain, uh, certain keys in that array. And we went over integers and strings and they're all pretty much the same, right? You, each one is done the same way, you just use a different data type. So with that information, now we're going to get into loops. Now a loop is something that does what it says it does. It, it loops through something. The point of a loop is so that you can do something a certain number of times. You iterate through something or over something a certain number of times and you can base it off any, any value you can pull in, right? And you'll see how how useful that can be in the future but for now we're going to uh, it's going to be it's going to be pretty pretty basic so we're going to set up a loop in our start for whatever reason now we're going to use a for loop this is the most common loop especially in uh, game programming now if you came from my uh, my wordpress series we used while loops quite a bit while this do this right and this is kind of the same thing except there's some a different different parameters that you have to use inside of a for loop and it makes our job a bit easier actually so the first thing you have to do within a for loop is you have to initialize the variable that you're going to be using in our case we're going to set up an integer and then you have to set up the name of that and this is typically an i right so i and it would be the integer, so the value will be stored within i. So now we have a variable with the name i. Now we're going to close that statement. That's not correct though. We're going to set this to equal zero. Okay, so we're going to initialize it and then set a start value for it, which is zero. And now we're going to set our condition. Now this means that this loop, everything in, inside of this loop, will be iterated over as long as this condition is still true. And our condition is going to be i is equal to something, less than something, greater than something, whatever you want it to be. But remember, i right now is zero. So before we get into anything, i is zero. So we're going to say, hey, as long as i is less than five, we'll continue through this loop and then close that statement. So what does that mean exactly though? So we're saying i is less than five. i is zero, so it'll go loop through one time, two times, three times, four times, and then five times. Because when it gets, when it gets to four, it's been zero, one, two, three, four, right? So we go zero to one, that's one, one loop through. 1 to 2, 2, 2 to 3, 3, 3 to 4, 4, and then 4 to 5 will be 5. But after it gets to 5, this condition is no longer true. So when this condition is not true, it'll stop. It'll return and go out of the, the loop and continue on down the uh, whatever we have here. So after this, we have to increase the value of i. If we don't, then it doesn't make any sense. And what I, what I mean by that is we're, is we're going to take the i value and we're going to increase it by 1 each time this loop occurs. So it starts at 0, it'll continue until it equals or until it's less or until it is equal to or greater than 5. And if we were to uh, leave it like that, then it wouldn't do anything. It's always going to be less than 5 because it's, it's 0. But now we're going to increase it by 1 each time it goes through. So if we do that, each time it goes through, it increases by 1. After 5, it won't go anymore. So now everything inside of these curly braces will, will play out for 5 times. So we'll do a print just for an example. And then we can, for now, we'll say hey, right? So when we start this, I, it will say hey 5 times. What, what is no you're not? Oh. Let's get rid of this for now. Control X on that. Come back into Unity. Click play. 
and uh, index out of range. Ah, doesn't know. That's an error we'll get into here in a little bit, but I left that over after I removed the array, so it was confused. So now it said, hey, let's look at that again. Hey, five times, and then it moved on to the player dying because the player died. So we have this value of i, and each time it goes through, it goes up one. But now we know, with this information, we know what loop number it is on. So we know when it's got to the third loop. We know when it's gotten to the fourth loop. We have that information. And the way we have that information is the value of i. Because each time it goes through, it increments by one. So if it increments by one, then that number corresponds to the count the loop is on, the number the loop is on. So if I print i and click play, each time it goes through, it'll go one, two, three, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, because it starts at zero. And or zero, one, two, three, four. There's only five, Austin. Get it right. <laughs> we have a uh, uh, we can count that way and then print the value of i which corresponds to the loop that we or the, the number that we're on and there's a lot of ways you can actually use this to do some pretty cool things if you think of an inventory system uh, it's a very complex thing i don't want you to even think about making one but i want you to think of how they are made and the way they're made is I'll, I'll strip it down to a basic inventory. Say you have an array that contains item names. And each of these item names, like arrays do, are related to a key. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, since they start at 0 and they go for as long as the length of the array, you now have the information or the item ID that you can get from a loop somehow, right? So say we have an array here. Let's, let's set up an array again. We'll do this. We'll make this equal to two. And I'll say the name of this, say these are names, right? Array string is the name of an item. This would be sword, and this would be potion. So now the sword in this case, now we won't use this if we do ever do an inventory system. We will not use an array like this. We'll use a dynamic list or a generic list that will uh, serve an, an inventory a lot better and but the potion is ID of one and the sword is ID of zero at least in this case right so now when I loop through I can say hey I want to loop through and I want to print the array string now this, this is in close or sorry square brackets there so find the array string of I and we're going to print this out so it's a print just like that and then print like that. Now it's going to print whatever that value is. And these are strings, so it should print out sword and then potion. Now we'll make sure if we loop through this five times, it's going to run through this, and this is going to equal to four, it's going to equal to, well, first of all, it's going to be two, three, and four, which are over the values we have. We only have zero and one. So it's going to be outside of the range of this array. And what that will do, is I'll show you, is it'll give me that error we were just talking about. At least it should. Yep, array index is out of range. That means we are accessing a value of an array that just doesn't exist. And we can't do that. So the way we can make sure when we're, we're cycling through an array is that we only go through for the amount of items that are contained in that array. And the way we do that is I'll take the array name which is uh, array string, then I will get the length of that array. Now this will start at zero, just like we want it to, and go up by one for each for each uh, value, for each length of it. So <laughs> we set it to equal to two here. So this will go through zero and then one, right? Just like it should. Now if I was to click play, and you'll see that sword potion and then the player dies. I gotta stop dying. Stop dying. I'll just turn off the print. Oh, I don't want the player to be able to die either. Okay, he doesn't. So now when I click play, you'll see sword potion. And so it was item zero, item one. Now, what if I wanted to print, say I have three here. Just watch what happens here. Everything will be 
fine, right? So what we do is we print out what's available, but then it gets to a space that contains no string. And it's just like, oh, it's, it's, it's just no, it doesn't, nothing exists there. It's empty and that's fine. So now we want to, what do we want to do now? Uh, so one thing we can do is uh, we can set up a class that contains that contains uh, like definitions for an item. Say like the name of the item, the ID of the item, the power of the item, the description of the item. Set up this class and then create a list based on that class. So what we could do then is say, I want this list to contain 10 items that draw from the values of that class. So I could have 10 items that I could then individually set up the name and the ID and all that stuff for each item. Now we won't get into that for this time because that deserves its own part as that is a pretty cool system, but uh, that's a loop and that's an array and we did that and it works. So this tutorial was recorded with a different piece of software. It was not recorded with my usual Camtasia because Camtasia is getting on my nerves. It is expensive and it sucks. I like the recording, but I hate the studio part. And since it records files that only the studio can, can render, and if you extract the video from that file, you don't have the mouse data that you need, the, the cursor data, so there's no cursor, and it just sucks, and it takes so long to render, and then I have to get it into an editing program that I want to edit in, and then I have to render it again. Terrible workflow. So for now, if it goes well, I am using this little piece of software right here. It is called Open Broadcaster Software, and it's pretty early on in uh, its life, it seems. I didn't even know that, but I am very satisfied with it so far. I've done quite a few tests and it takes, it, it makes my workflow, it seems at least, so much better. And I'm recording in Audacity as well, as you can see, but I'm also recording in, uh, in open broadcaster software. I think it's referred to as OBS. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can sync up the audio. But if you're looking to record your screen or do like a, a live stream, I would really suggest this. It's free and it's, it doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. I've used so many that just suck. <sighs> I'm looking for the quality that Camtasia Recorder gives you, but I'm looking for a better workflow than that. I hate it. And I, I'm going to try this out. Let me know if you like the quality of the video. It may not be as good as the Camtasia recorder. I don't know. I've done quite a few tests and it turned out pretty good, but we'll, we'll have to see. So in the next part, we have to cover, I have a list I'm looking at. We went over loops. Yeah, okay. So we need to cover a switch statement, how to use that. And then we'll have to cover, uh, we're going to go over enums and a coroutine, kind of an important thing. I'll discuss that, and that seems to be it for the basic series. So after that, then we'll get into some more advanced ideas, and then we'll get to making a game. I know it seems like we're going through a lot to make a game, but I want to make sure you understand what's going on when we start developing that game, so that you don't just you don't just copy what I'm doing. You understand how to do whatever you want to do with it. That's very important. That'll do it for this part, though. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you would follow me on Google Plus and Twitter, my name on those are Awful Media, and Google Plus is Austin Gregory, but I also have the Awful Media uh, page as well. Now, I just made a lot of noise on my phone. Let me set that over there. So, uh, thank you for watching. My name is Austin. I'll see you next time.